Good morning, Saudi Daisy. My name is Michael Griffith. Today we have news on prom, leaked government documents, and more. Your school news starts now. Seniors who haven't seen Miss Joyner yet to pick out their prestige photo for the 2022 to 2023 yearbook need to go to room 402 during third block before February 13th. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get in shape because prom's right around the corner, Saudi Daisy. This year's prom will take place Saturday, March 25th in the new gym. Tickets go on sale February 10th, and the final day to purchase your ticket will be March the 20th. Tickets will be $45, and you must be in good academic standing to attend. This means no extreme behavior issues, no tardy issues, and you must be passing all of your classes. It's time to purchase your senior ads. Parents and or guardians may purchase a quarter, half, or full page message to go in this year's yearbook. These ads can be purchased at wallsworthyearbook.com, but keep in mind if you'd like. You're able to practice your own web design skills. If you are interested, pick up a form in the main office to learn more. The deadline to purchase an ad is March 24. Now we go to January Jacob with your January sports. Thank you, Michael. The Lady Trojans traveled to the East Hamilton on Tuesday, hoping to keep their hold on first place in the district. The Trojans continue to dominate, shooting 60% from the floor and 50% from behind the arch. Junior Olivia Hall had 18 points on the evening with four from beyond the arch. Cameron Varner added 11 with six assists. The Lady Trojans are back in action Thursday for coaches versus cancer as they take on the Indians of Sequatchie County. The Trojan wrestlers fought hard on Tuesday for region duels against Signal Mountain, but came up short in the final match. Signal Mountain took the early lead, getting six pins in seven matches, but the Trojans kept battling, getting a tech fall and three straight pins, bringing the score to 34 to 33. It all came down to the final match, and the Eagles got the pin with a few seconds left in the third period. Final score, 40 to 33. The Trojans are on the road Friday in Pigeon Forge. And that's all for sports. Now on to the break. Man, it's really chilly this morning, but you don't have to worry because it won't be like that all weekend. The highs for today are in the low 50s and the lows in the low 30s. It's mostly sunny today and the chance of rain is just 6%. It'll start to get a little warmer this Saturday with highs in the upper 50s and lows in the low 40s. It'll be pretty dry, so all your plans should be safe. The chance of rain is about 8%, but that'll rise to a 40% on Saturday night, bringing us into Sunday which will be overcast with rains, with the chance of rain being 75%. The highs for the day are in the low 50s and the lows in the upper 40s. Sounds like a pretty fresh weekend to me. Make sure to stay safe, have fun, and maybe do something. Back to you, news. That's to me, I believe, yeah. Thank you, Clayton. 
Another restaurant is closing in Hickson. CC's Pizza is closing after 26 years in business. Over the past couple of years, more and more restaurants in Hickson have been closing due to the newer restaurants coming in. More than 80% of Americans approve of a special counsel to investigate classified documents found at President Biden's Delaware home and former private office as vice president, according to a CNN poll conducted by the SSRS. Findings based on more than 1,000 people showed the sentiment was similar among party lines. The same can be said in Washington, D.C. John Lornick reports. A bunch of questions are swirling around Washington, D.C. right now. What were the documents? What did they contain? Was there any damage? And lawmakers want answers. The Senate Intelligence Committee says they have not been given access to the classified information discovered in the possession of President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. This position that we are left in limbo until somehow a special counsel designates that it's okay for us to get briefed is not going to stand. Other lawmakers say they'll take action against the White House. I'm prepared to refuse consent or to fast track any nominee for any department or agency and to take every step I can on every committee on which I serve to impose consequences on the administration until they provide these documents. Meanwhile, the roughly 12 items of classified material discovered at former Vice President Mike Pence's home are described as background briefing memos, numerous sources tell CNN. A U.S. official says the FBI is working alongside U.S. intelligence agencies to assess the documents. Meanwhile, lawmakers from both parties are upset with the overall situation. I'm frustrated that uh, if anyone doesn't handle confidential and secret uh, documents uh, in the manner in which they're supposed to. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The National Archives is considering sending letters to former U.S. presidents and vice presidents, including Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama, to make sure they don't have any classified documents, according to a source familiar with the matter. Though government officials aren't the only ones getting their hands on documents, even gamers are getting in on the fun. An enthusiast of anything military vehicle related, War Thunder fans are quite well known and respected in the field of authenticity of their game assets. So whenever a mistake is made by the developers, the fans are quick to prove them wrong with leaked government documents. This has happened once again with the release of the F-16 Fighting Falcon not being accurate enough to its real-world counterparts, causing fans to leak classified military documents on the F-16 to prove a point. This is not the first time War Thunder fans have done this. It has been done a total of three separate times. When will the leaking end and the safety of military documents begin? We truly will never know. However, we now know that Gajin Entertainment will be announcing a rework of the F-16 at the cost of leaked government documents. Now to Wyeth with entertainment. Thank you, Michael. This is Wyeth with your Entertainment Minute. My fellow gamers, today we have been graced with a remake of the survival horror game classic, Dead Space. The developers Motive Studio have stated that the game will be as close to the original as possible with the occasional update to dated systems here and there. M&M's has replaced their iconic spokes candies with comedian Maya Rudolph. The spokes candies had gone through a series of redesigns in the past. The rebrand caught the eye of conservatives including Fox News host Tucker Carlson. Also less sexy. That's progress. At the time of the update, and again in recent weeks, with some claiming the makeovers were another example of a liberal agenda gone too far. Justin Roiland was hit with felony domestic abuse charges this past week. The voice of Rick and Morty is now no longer working with the production team of the show. Though this would appear to be a problem as he is the voice actor for both Rick and Morty and many other characters on the show. That's all for the Entertainment Minute this week. Now back to Michael. Thank you, Wyeth. Michael, 
Michael, please, please, Michael. I don't want to go. Rick, I don't want to die. No. Please, Michael. Rick, please, don't go. I'm sorry for the Rick. domestic violence, Michael. No. I'm sorry for the false imprisonment. Rick, please. I don't want to die. Michael, please, I'm... <laughs> Sorry, sorry. That's all for your news this week, Saudi Daisy. Catch you on the flip side, dudes. Peace out.